Mark III Toyota MR2s don't have a great deal of underbody protection at the front and so water and salt and grime can get in and start rusting stuff and that includes steering universal joints. Now that's not something you want to have rusting away into nothing so if you need to replace it this is what you need to do. Most important thing while you're doing this before you take anything off the car is make sure the front wheels are pointing dead ahead. If they're slightly off to the left or slightly off to the right, it's gonna make it really difficult to judge whether you've got the steering wheel on bang on straight when you put everything back together. Here are the tools you're gonna to need to do it. You'll need a socket set with a couple of extension pieces like this. You'll need a 10 millimeter socket, a 12 millimeter socket, and something to use as a breaker bar. This is the end of a crutch. You'll also need a wire brush, a small hammer, a large flat blade screwdriver, any other small screwdriver, and a pair of pliers, and also, some releasing agent like WD-40 or plus gas here and a little bit of grease. And the steering universal joint, which on this car is nice and new, is hidden down here underneath the brake master cylinder. So if yours is rusty and you need to replace it, the easiest way to get access to it, because all of these pipes are in the way, is to take out this storage bucket. Holding this bucket in are four bolts. They're all 10 mil. There's one here and here, and then there are two more on the bracket that also holds the horn. You can take all of these bolts out. This horn will be loose, but the wires feed through a tiny grommet underneath, so it needs to stay in the bucket, but that wire is long enough. You'll have enough play to lift the whole thing forward and get access to the UJ underneath the master cylinder. And now with a 12 millimeter socket attached to the ratchet with a breaker bar, you should be able to break that bolt loose. And there we have it. Weirdly, it says 11 on top, but it's a 12 millimeter bolt. I don't know if that 11 stands for something else, but make sure you use a 12 mil because an 11 will not fit. For the next step, we need to go into the car and undo the bolt on the lower portion of the upper universal joint, which you can't see. It's very dark in there, and the easiest way to see what you're doing is to get a head torch, or in my case, a head hat. Oh yeah, very fashionable. So what we're looking for is this bolt here. It's between the clutch and the brake, and it's the lowest bolt on the upper universal joint on the steering. It's the same 12 millimeter bolt, 12 millimeter bolt as before, sorry, and you'll need a 20 centimeter extension tube to get the ratchet around the back of the brake pedal. We've got all the bolts off this shaft here, so that's not attached by anything more than friction right now. But in order to get it off, what you'll need to do is spray a lot of penetrating fluid down here to make sure it's not rusted onto the input shaft of the steering rack, and then get out the hammer and tap it here upwards towards the bulkhead. Once you start being able to see that second group of splines on the lower shaft that goes into the steering rack, you should be able to give it a wiggle and, and release the universal joint. There we go. Now make sure you don't twist it because you want to keep the steering wheel straight, but that is the lower universal joint and shaft separated. Now, in order to remove it, we're not going to remove it because this has already been replaced, you can, being careful to keep that grommet there in place, pull that shaft out and replace it. But, because this is still relatively new, we're going to leave it there. What we are going to do though is clean up that spline section there. It's got quite a lot of rust on it, and I'd rather it didn't. So, we're going to spray some penetrating fluid, which should help get rid of some of the rust, and wire brush it cleaner, and hopefully, then, it will be nice and shiny-ish. So there we go, that's a little bit cleaner now. So removing all the rust from those splines will make it much easier to slide this part of the universal joint back down into the steering rack. But before you put everything back together, you must check that the steering wheel is lined up perfectly with the wheels, because this is the only point of adjustment you get in the entire steering system, and I'll show you why using this old rusted universal joint. So this is the shaft that goes into the upper universal joint inside the car. You can see it's got this slot cut out here and that is so that you can slide it in 
and then bolt it down. The bolt goes over here, which is why you must take the bolts out from both universal joints before you remove everything. But if you look closer, it has these flat sections right there. And that means that this will only slot into the upper universal joint in one orientation. And it's the same with every part of the system back to the steering wheel, besides the very bottom. This section does not have that. So if you need to make any adjustments, if you need to move the steering wheel to the left or to the right to make sure it's straight, this is where you have to do it. Now that we've got the steering wheel and wheels all aligned, you can slide that universal joint back down onto the splined input shaft for the steering rack. It won't go on all the way by hand, you're going to need to get a hammer out. If you're having trouble fully seating the lower universal joint, what you can do to help it slide on is use a bit of copper grease or something on the input shaft of the steering rack, or if that still isn't enough, what you can do is take two screwdrivers, and I'll show you what you can do with them. So, take a large flat blade like this, and into the hole at the top, put any other screwdriver, it doesn't really matter what, as long as it fits, and use it to open up the jaws of that lower universal joint clamp. So you slide the flat blade into the gap between each half, and then using the other screwdriver, just give it a twist like that. That'll open up the jaws, and then using your left hand, or right hand, whichever way around you've organized your body, you can then tap the universal joint onto the input spline more easily because there'll be less friction at work. And now, when you're tightening these up using your breaker bar, it doesn't matter if the universal joints wobble about a bit because the splines should make sure the steering wheel is aligned. So if you get back into your car and the steering wheel isn't, isn't perfectly straight, don't worry, it will, hopefully, if you've done everything right, line up properly once everything's buttoned up. Once you've made sure all the bolts inside the car are done up nice and tight, and the bolts down here, then you can start putting the front of your Toyota MR2 back together. You just have to make sure that when you refit the bucket, you line up the bracket for the horn, and when you refit the plastic cover, you make sure you fit those plastic clips properly and try not to break any, as I have done many, many times. And that's it. It is as simple as that. Replacing a Toyota Mark III MR2 lower steering universal joint. Done and done. So that's how to replace a lower steering rack universal joint on a Mark III MR2. It'll probably take you a couple of hours. It's not too difficult. You don't need any special tools. Uh, just give it a go. It'll save you a little bit in terms of garage bills. And if you do it right, it'll be absolutely perfectly safe, nothing to worry about. What you might want to do is after driving the car a little, go back, just check all the bolts, as you would with any repair or modification, just to make sure everything is safe, everything is sealed, and everything is working perfectly. So thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.